Earlier, I referred to the feature called Spotlight. Let's go back and now and take a proper look at it. Spotlight lives in the top right hand side of the screen and looks like a magnifying glass. When you click on it, you're presented with a search field. Spotlight is a new search technology that can find anything in your Mac or anything that's mounted to your Mac as quickly as you can type. When I say anything mounted, that is something like a hard drive or a pen drive or a CD. It can also search those. Why is it of use? Well, if you have forgotten where you saved something, do not panic. All you need to do is just type what you're looking for in the search field and Spotlight will start to find it. Let me show you. I'm going to type in Kiron, and as soon as I start the typing, Spotlight dynamically displays results which match the criteria of what I put in. What's very interesting about this is that you'll see my top hit on Spotlight is Kiron's media file. That's fine because that's my name. But you'll also notice that the rest of them are movies, but in them, none of them have my name in the file name. What's very interesting with Spotlight is the Spotlight also searches within the file and not just the file name. And that's very handy because let's say you forgot what the name of the document was you were looking for, but you knew what it was about. If you know what it's about, use the content of what it was about as your search field. Put that in and that will find what you're looking for. Another thing about the Mac, unlike Windows, which place menus at the top of a program window, Mac OS X features a dynamic bar at the top of your screen. The menu bars change according to the active application. What does that mean? Well, if I open up, let's say, a dress book down here, and I open up my iCal, which is my calendar. If I click on iCal, you'll now notice up in the top left-hand side, my menu system is for the iCal. If I click on my address book, you'll now notice that my menu system is for the address book. And if I click on the desktop, my finder menu is now available, which is the same as when I double click on the hard drive, which shows me my finder window. So the menu system changes depending on which is active. Speaking of menus, you may be wondering how are you going to access the familiar shortcut menus with an Apple one button mouse? How do you right click? Well, to right click, press the control key, which is two to the left of the space bar, keep your finger on the control key, and then click. And when you click, you then get your contextual menu, which gives you a right click. However, if you have a mouse that has two buttons or more and plug it directly into a Mac, your right click will automatically be there on the second button. Lastly, all we have to do is look at the dock. The dock is that bar of icons that sits at the bottom of your screen and provides easy access to some of Apple's applications on your Mac, such as Mail, Safari, iTunes, Address Book and QuickTime Player. For your convenience, you will also find a trash can. And the trash can is where you delete everything. If you're working on a document, let's say I'll just click on my hard drive and I'll go into documents. And this I want to delete. To delete it, all I gotta do is drag it down to the dock into my trash can. To do that, I click on the left hand side of the icon, click, drag, drop, and then it goes. To empty the trash can, I then go up to the finder and click on empty trash. Once I've done that, I have now emptied the trash. If you have a CD installed, you can also drag the CD or DVD down to the dock and you'll notice that the trash can changes to an eject sign, which means you can now eject a CD or a pen drive or a hard drive. Lastly, because the dock is a shortcut place for all of your software, you can also customize it. For example, this is iMovie, I can move it if I click on iMovie, I can move it around into the dock. I can go up to my window and click on applications. And I want, let's say I want to add another application. I've, a very good example would be Microsoft Office. I use that a lot and it's not down here. Well, I'm going to be using Microsoft Word a lot. So if I click and drag, keep going, wait till the icon separate and drop. I've now added Microsoft Word to the dock. If I don't want it, click, drag and drop and your dock is completely customizable depending on what you want to do. You will also notice that up on the Apple icon, there is a preference for the dock. We'll come back to this later on.